Okay, so welcome to our next example for declaring and instantiating arrays. You'll see in this example, we have a Boolean data type. I've named the array bool array. And what's different in this example is I put the array brackets attached to the variable name, where in our last example, I put the array brackets attached to the data type. And both are correct, both are accepted by the compiler. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm instantiating and declaring the array all in one line instead of two separate lines. And as we discussed before, this uh, parameter for is being passed to the constructor for the array, and it is a fixed number. It cannot be changed. Again, to recall the Java definition of an array is a fixed size collection of same data types. So we'll have four Boolean elements, no more, no less. And to demonstrate what is stored in the array, I will print what is in location where the index is zero. So when I compile and run and print this, we see that it stores false. And that links to a other topic, which is what's the default value for Boolean types? The default value is false. So when we instantiated a Boolean array of length four, it put the default value in all locations and we can print all locations to illustrate that. So I'm going to print index 0, 1, 2, 3, compile, and run the main method. And we see it's false four times. And that's the default value for Boolean. We discussed last time the default value for an integer was 0. A default value for a double would be 0, 0.0. And a default value for a string or an object type or a custom object type would be null. So, and we have to remember to address null to avoid null pointer exception errors. So we need to know the default types for each of the data types um, when we declare arrays. Now, we can modify what's stored in this array. So I'll take my Boolean array and at index zero, I'm going to say, let's store true. And then I'll take it again and store at index two, true again. And when I print it this time, I expect the output to be at bool array zero to give me a true, bool array one to give me a false, bool array two to be true, and bool array three to be false. So let's compile, run the main method, and we see we get true, false, true, false, as we expected. Now, instead of printing the system out print four times, another way we can handle printing arrays is using a for loop. So I'm going to start my for loop as four with an integer value called i equal to zero. That will be the first index value of my array. And then I want my index value to go up to three. So my next... Uh, Part of my for loop is i less than my array name is bool array dot length. So it's going to say, what's the length of bool array? It's four. Well, i can be less than that four, so it's going to be allowed to go up to three. And then we will increment it by one. And for each time it runs, we'll say system out print ln bool array at location i. So when i is 0, it should print up true. When i is 1, it should print up false. And as it goes through the for loop, we say we don't need these four lines of code. We'll accomplish the same thing here. And when the arrays get larger, if they have 20 elements or 100 elements, the for loop will allow us to go through the array um, and print all of the elements if we want, or more importantly, search all of the elements when we need to do searches. So let's compile this and run it. And we see we get true, false, true, false. We've gone through each value of the array using a for loop. 